Hey there everyone, this is Yui. Welcome to episode 12 of Enigmatica 2 Expert Skyblock. Today we're going to continue progressing towards Flux Networks and hopefully get one set up. We'll find out. So let's get to it. So didn't do a whole lot between episodes. I did clean up this area here. There was uh, at this point no reason for the processor auto crafting to be here anymore. So I got rid of it. It is now in the auto crafting area up at the top there. This is getting more and more laggy. It's right here at the top. And then I move the actual auto crafting into storage because, well, that's where it fits. I went ahead, I moved the phytogenic. That's in storage as well. Right here. And I went ahead and added 10 more. I don't know if this is all of them. I'll do the checks later, but I went ahead and added another infuser just to help keep up. Uh, this hasn't been an issue, not being able to lock these, so I think it's okay. But yeah, so now there's a ton of essence in storage, which we can use to craft various parts. And I probably, oh no, I was, I was probably standing there. Never mind. All right, so to get to Flux Networks, we need to make a dimensional transceiver. All right, to make this, we're gonna to need to get further into Ender IO, but we're also going to need a dragon heart. So let's try to kill the dragon. And I say try because I think the end is a little different. Anyways, in here, I have a wither farm. Uh, this was manual. I was using this just to get some stuff. So let's go ahead and finish this off and make it an automatic wither farm. I was being cheap. So these wither dust blocks made with the wither dust, they are wither proof. So you can use them for your build. Actually, before I do this, I need to check the directions. Put this down and show working area. Perfect. This only goes one direction, so make sure you build your farm accordingly. So we could drop this here, put this down there. I am missing a couple things. That's all right. I'll grab them. Okay, that. Oh, we're doing a crusher. Oh, okay. That's that's fine. I just realized I didn't have a grinder, so I made a crusher, but they store the items internally instead of externally, so we'll do both, just in case. I don't want items floating in there. Uh, not this one. Grab this power cell, and we need an input chest. Yeah. Totally. Okay, so that's it. Now we need a way to input the skulls and the soul sand, which is going to be done via. Hey, you guessed it, the ender chest. Do I have any? Not really. I'll have to make more. Go ahead. Oh, that was quick. Okay, while we're also here, to get to the end, we need an end cake, I believe it is. Uh, let's see. Cake. This one. Oh, boy. That recipe looks awesome. Empowered <laughs> diamantine? Wow. That's harsh. Oh, that is so harsh. These recipes are a killer. Okay, I've got the end crystal. I've got the cake. I think I have all the casing and stuff, so now it's just the material. Oh, I don't have cake. Uh, cake is not going to be easy. we we'll use a standard recipe and figure it out. 
Not much else to do about that, so that means I'm going to have to get a cow. Uh, the easiest way to get a cow, I'm going to say, is just since there's a ton of emeralds, or have some emeralds, go to the market and say, hey, uh, I need a cow. And it'll be like 10 emeralds. I'll be like, yep, sure enough, there you go. Enjoy. And then we need, actually we need a, we need a jug, what's it called, a uh, cow in a bottle thing or something like that. Distractions, distractions. Alright, so, I'm going to make a cow in a jar first. Sure, give me an anvil. Start that. We need cow down. Or throw it onto the dancing floor. Here you go, cow. Give me some milk. Let's make that. And now the fun part. There's nowhere nice to do this here. <laughs> oh, do I have an imprisonment tool? I probably do, but it's buried, so I'm just going to make a new one. Because it's easier. Gun is off, so I don't kill it. There we go. Alright, so you take your anvil, or cow, and your jar, and you go somewhere. Like, uh, sure, the wither farm is nice and empty. Put that down. Put your cow on top. Before he runs away, you drop an earful on him. Boom. And he's in the jar. And now this will just produce milk constantly. So I'm going to drop it. I don't know where. I'll figure that out. Here. Let's just put it here. And there you go. This will supply you with milk. You can pipe out of this so that you can constantly store it somewhere else. I'm not going to bother with that. So let's grab some brown, sure, and black. And always remember to put diamonds on your ender chest. Interface. So I'm just going to set up the, the ender chest for the wither and set up the recipe. The recipe is going to be simple. It's going to be processing soul sand, four of those, plus a skull, three of them. And I don't think I have another star. So that'll go there, and that'll be the pattern. Anyways, I'll be back in a second. Let me set all this up so you don't have to sit through this boring stuff. All right, and we're back. So I changed it up. The wither dust uh, is good for manual farming, but it doesn't really protect the machines that well for automation. So I went ahead and upgraded to the draconium-infused obsidian. Uh, the other option... I know reinforced obsidian will work. Uh, if you need to get draconium, uh, make yourself a digital miner. Go to the deep dark and then set it up. Uh, I do silk touch on, so the little S button here, so it says on. And if you go to config, change the radius to 32. I just type 99 and hit the check mark. And then change the max to like uh, 250 is good. That's uh, close to build height. What you do is go to new filter or dictionary and type in or draconium hit the check mark and it should appear here if it doesn't appear here you typed it in wrong it is case sensitive so do that and then hit save it'll put it in this list and then what you can do is just hit start and it'll tell you how many you can find so usually per 32 radius you'll find like 10 to 15 so you have to move it around a lot, but 
it's a way to get draconium. Until you can make your draconium seed. So, I set it up with that. I grab the chest. So all it is is just a chest hooked up. So it'll dump the soul sand and the skulls into here and then pipe it over. And then I made, well no, we already did that. The mob crusher for killing it. Oh, that's what I wanted to do. I remember now. I was in the middle of setting it up, but I forgot. Tanks, cactus, four of those. I want to keep this experience. Just because. We'll, we'll do this second too this time. And always remember to put a diamond on your stuff if you're playing on a server. Otherwise people can take it. And boom. There we go. So if we dump this. Oh there. Sure. Good enough. Let's toss this here and insert, or just extract here, it's fine. Extract always, insert. And there we go. Now we have another source of uh, whatever you want to call it, essence, that's the word. I'll probably dump it over here in my manual spawn room. There we go. Uh, in here. I haven't shown you this. I have a uh, blizz. I went around searching for a planes so I can turn it on and it spawns a bunch of blizzes. That's how I've been automating my resonant uh, conversion kits. That's the word. Well, specifically the Signalium one. Right? Yeah, so that's how I've been automating those. It's just I go in there every so often, I turn it on if I'm low. That's good enough. So I went ahead and I made the cake. Something I failed to realize before, wrong cake, is uh, the cow essence, which I do have. You can put it on a bucket to get milk. So I just added this recipe in there. I also just added a tank buffer for the cow in a jar using a flat transfer node attached to the bottom of the cow in a jar so it just automatically puts the milk down here. There you go, 23 buckets of milk. Hmm, okay. So when I need to get into cooking, which I probably should at some point, we'll be good. So the next thing we need are the crystals. These. Uh, we need at least four but I'll probably kill the dragon more than that. I went with, the recipe is a little more complicated. You need hardened glass, but the fused quartz also works. So I'm using quartz. Cause I think I have plenty of quartz. Yeah, plenty ish, 40K, that, that's enough. So I'm using that recipe for my crystals. Five, six, two more. And then let's go see what this looks like. Seven and eight. All right, I'm gonna drop this up here somewhere. Here's my extended crafting setup. It is uh, not very big just yet. Until I get to tier three, I can't automate it, so I don't bother. We will need to get into that. Like, today yeah because we need charged draconium which means we need a crafting or which means we need the this crystalline no crystal tine in crystal tine whatever you need that which means you need tier three the recipe itself is not super expensive but you need tier three all right, let's go check out the end. Go. 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 Do I need to feed it? I think I might need to feed it. If I remember correctly, it eats Eyes of Ender per teleport. But I could be wrong. Hmm. 
Well, let me figure this out and I'll be back once I get to the end, I suppose. All right, here we are at the end. Uh, the issue for me was my hunger bar was full, so I couldn't literally eat the cake. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I've already started just a tiny bit. They've already killed the dragon before, so I got to resummon it. But here's the platform, which means I am going to build a bottom slab cobble platform in this general area just to pick up the drops in case they fall and just you know experience so i'll be back in a moment once i've built out this platform for a while all right here we go i've got a small two by two platform uh, the reason i did bottom slabs is because i don't want endermen ramming it up so for this take off your offhand weapon if you have one I went ahead and made more crystals because I'm probably going to farm this guy a little bit. Drop the crystals down because you can shoot these. So be careful. Don't, don't destroy them. And once we put the fourth one down. There we go. And free endstone. Yoink. I'll take that. Uh, I'm not imagining this fight is going to be very hard. Because I should be able to shoot these. Yeah. Ooh, let's grab some bars while we're at it. Free resources, you know? Yeah, I hear you. Clouds were really noisy, though, huh? Let's see. This has a range of uh, 55, so I should be able to hit most of them without moving too much. And there. That's all of them? <laughs> And now we'll just shoot the dragon. Shoot him. Come on. Go towards the middle. Yeah. Super easy fight. I'm gonna wait for him to go land. This is technically a melee weapon. There we go. That way... Oh, they still spawned down here. No, they probably teleported from the explosions. Oh, there is no dragon egg, is there? No, it doesn't look it. But wait for this heart. It does take it a moment. Uh, if you kill it here, it can technically drop there. And theoretically, it should be by spawn. Oh, it gave me more. Hello. Thank you. I'll take it. Free endstone. I'm pretty sure there's nothing out there to explore, so I'm not even going to bother. But I will kill this guy just a few more times, and then I'll meet you back at base. So, see you in a moment. Alright, and we're back. So, I killed the dragon a few times. Next up on our list is we need a slice and splice it. But in order to get that, we need a simple alloy furnace. You can't jump straight up because you need the dye blends. And those can only be made in the alloy smelter. So I made one of those. And what we should be able to do, actually, let's grab an interface. We might as well. And cable. We might as well just automate this straight off the bat, because we can always swap out the machine. What am I even thinking of? these dies here so we need both of these so we're gonna need this organic stuff which means um slime will you slime cocoa slime and coal there we go that's good do organic black dye using yep same thing slime slime is readily available in general What's that? That's brown and black, and here's green. Using that. Because I don't want to deal with the brushes and stuff, because then we need a sag mill. And I don't feel like setting one of those up. Let's go to our auto crafting area. Full of nothingness. 
put it right here. There we go. You get those. And you need a conduit. There you are. Extract always. Uh, these will only do alloys, I believe. So there's no... No furnace mode for that one, I believe. I think. I, I could be wrong. We'll see. But either way, we should be able to... Actually, we need one more recipe, don't we? Two more. We need... This recipe. Which these can go in the induction smelter. And that might be a better idea. Because it is uh, faster. At least for now. Let's see, do I have it? Induction. Yeah, go here. Alright, we should be able to now make the slice and splice. Nope. Quartz and soul powder. Okay. There you go. There's that. And not that one. I guess it is that one. There you go. All the way to the bottom to where the pulverizer is. I am running out of room on some of these machines. And you should be able to craft yet? No. Why are you not happy with that? Brushed quartz. For what? For the die? Not that one. Not that one either. Where is it? The industrial. Missing crushed quartz. Hmm, okay, well. That's. That's weird. Oh, so if you run into that problem, then uh, I guess just swap it out. It shouldn't. It shouldn't have been using that recipe. I don't even see it changing here. So why did it? Don't know. Don't care. There we go. Two fixed recipes. Ah, uh, gonna be a pain to find where I put them. There they are. Here and here. Crushed versus dust. There we go. Lice. Almost there. There we go. Go. Start. Do it. Now we need a pattern for this guy. This is probably not going to work. Oh, it does work. Need two silicon. Yeah, that'll work. Although, <laughs> we need an axe. So what are we going to make? A dark axe? Yep, there you go. We'll do a dark axe. Because the vanilla tools, uh, they don't have very good durability. What about you? 2,000. You should be fine. Well, we might as well make shears to accompany it. I have so many. 64 of those, and it's almost out. Go craft that. Go and craft that. Go and slice. Let's go set this guy up real quick. We need another interface. And possibly cable. I always forget if I need cable or not, because I don't know how I laid out the room. Cables on me. Let's go. Here. You get this. 
to make that. Couple conduits. Now these things are actually pretty smart. They oh we need a capacitor. Ooh, I don't know if I have a good one. I did capture a bunch of Endermen while I was at the end. Uh, we do not have a good one. In my machine room, though, I do have a painter. That I'm currently not using. It's got a decent capacitor, so I'll grab that. Oh, we're so close. It's almost there. Oh, where was I? Over here. We go a capacitor for you, not the recipes. And there we go. We should actually be able to make it now. Let's see how far off I am. Oh, we need a sag mill. Oh, that's okay. No, not that. Well, yes, that. Just not, not like that. What are we missing? Soul binder. Oh, that's right. We need to get into this stuff. So let me. This is going to be boring. I need extended crafting. I need a tier three guy. So I need to gather all these parts up. I have mana dust from a quest reward from a long time ago. Otherwise, it's not that bad to make. The other thing is I have that, and we've got the components, and all the frames are automated. Yeah, I've got I've got all this stuff automated pretty much. So let me craft this up, and then I'm gonna craft up some of these guys. That way I can automate the stuff, and then I'll be back once I get a a machine room set up for this stuff. All right, and we're back for a second. So I figured I would show you how to automate these things. So the first one I'm going to automate is the crystal teen. Right, to do this, you're going to have to go into here and basically count up all the resources and grab them. Then just load them in in a processing pattern. Order does not matter. And then the output. Uh, if you don't have one yet and you don't want to, you can do it like this. Move items. This part will be jacked up, so you have to clear it out. And then go ahead and put them in again. And that's the recipe. Now on the other side, you're going to need an interface attached to the automation interface. These can only do one recipe. And I'm pretty sure it's only the table under it, so it's basically one table, one automation interface per pattern. So automating this stuff might be a good idea. To set up this, uh, well, we have the pattern, so we could toss the pattern in here. To automate this guy, you need to give it a recipe. In order to do that, come down here, load in the recipe. Don't pull it out, just leave it like this, and come back up here and hit save. It'll save it and it'll craft it. And my thing's automatically set to export and throw into storage. So with that, this is all set up and I can just come out here. I can say, hey, give me one of these. It'll be like, yeah, sure, no problem. And we're at one. I was making another star. All right, let's double check on it. What you doing? Nothing? Oh, it crafted it. Okay, there you go. It was just taking it a moment. So there you have it. That's how you automate these things. So I'm going to set up a bunch of these automations just so I can get up to the crafting core. I'm going to set up another carpenter for liquefied coal, I guess. But I'm going to automate these tables just so that in the future adding recipes is not going to be such a pain. So I'll be back in a second. Alright, while it's crafting, I figured I'd show you the automation I set up for the 
pedestal and the crafting core. So I'm using the regular carpenter, not this. The recipes are very slightly different. This one requires four, this one only requires two. And similarly over here, this only requires two ingots while this requires three. But either way, you're going to need the liquefacted coal. So I've just set them both up here. Set in the recipes like normal. You can just... Why is there ten of those in there? Did I typo the recipe? I sure did. Oh well. It'll live. So I have a magma crucible. I have on the side of it exporting the pulverized coal with a crafting card and just an acceleration card so it goes a little faster. That will keep this full of pulverized coal, which will fill this up with the liquefacted coal, which then exports down to here, so I don't have to consider that in the recipes. I have to redo this recipe. This one's okay, I think, but that's how I am doing it. So once again, to set up these recipes, you can just... Well, if you do it this way, make sure you adjust it like that. And this goes in the carpenter. That's open. There we go. So that's how I'm setting up these recipes. So I'll be back in a second once I set up the uh, crafting core area. All right, and we're back. I set it up in the same area with the other things. Uh, if you want this to run a little bit faster, use the mechanism ultimate cables. They draw a lot more energy and uh, this thing Oh boy, uh, you need 2 billion, yep, 2 billion RF for this. So just grab it, throw it on a pedestal, and throw one in the middle. In the middle here I have a conduit, I've made a couple of these already. I put a filter on with settings for the draconium, the charged, to extract it. So... Uh, if you do not use a filter, it will pull out this draconium and waste your power. So don't do that. But one, one of these guys is sufficient, it seems. It's still not the fastest, but it's still pretty quick. So that'll end up in storage, so I don't have to babysit it. I already made a few, so let's go to the machine room and set up a couple other machines. Oh, that was noisy for a second. So I've got the soul binder here, and I've got the sag mill. Both of these are going to be needed. I just made an octatic capacitor, because that's all I got right now. Let's grab a couple conduits and hook this up. So the, the reason I'm doing this here is at least the soul binder... I, I can't automate this recipe because if I throw this in and throw this in, well, I, ca I can't program the computer to throw in this whole vial. So right off the bat, it's going to be really annoying. So I'm just going to make some of these by hand. That way there's some in storage. But I only need one for now. I'll make the rest later. What we actually need now is to craft the transceiver. This is what's going to unlock our gateway basically into the flux networks oh yeah that's a lot of junk to craft so I'll be back in a moment once I finish this crafting all right and we're back so here's the fresh new dimensional transceiver all we got to do is now run it through the sag mill so I figured I would make a grinding balls up I honestly have no idea if this is gonna help but let's try it I just went with the cheap ones for now. Just to see. This should get us 32. Jeez, it is using a ton of them. Oh, hoo -hoo. But this will get us the flux cores. Yeah, 32 is what it says. Yeah, it's just going right through them. That's 7. 8. No, no, it made 32, so don't bother. Now, I have no idea how well this will handle the duplication. So if you look up the recipe for the flux core, uh, you use one flux core to make three additional ones. 
but you need flux. Uh, this says you can obtain flux with redstone and fire or lava. That's a lie. You cannot do that. I tried it. I tested it. It doesn't work. You have to use the crafting recipe version of it. So keep that in mind. Let's see here how this handles it. Make me like a bunch of those. Yeah, it has no idea what to do. So be very careful not to run out of flux scores. The computer can't calculate it because of the because it's its own crafting ingredient basically, so it'll mess up the counts. So I will go ahead and craft the uh, the stuff up off camera and set up the network because it's not going to be that fun to do. Anyways, that's going to be it then for this episode. So if you made it this far, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.